Hi there, welcome everyone. Um, thank you for joining us for today's APMG webinar in partnership with the Strategy Implementation Institute. My name is Mark Constable, I'm from APMG and I'll be your host and moderator. And I'm delighted to be joined by Antonio Nieto Rodriguez, a leading expert in project management and strategy implementation, co-founder of the Strategy Implementation Institute and former chairman of the Project Management Institute. Uh, Antonio has also authored a number of successful publication and brings a wealth of project and strategy experience to the session through executive PMO positions at the likes of PricewaterhouseCoopers, BNP Paribas and Glatso Smithcry. So you're in really good hands for today's webinar, which will focus on the potential that greater capability and strategy implementation from both individual and organisational perspectives can bring when it comes to addressing the worrying statistics we continue to see concerning projects and other major organisational initiatives that fail to deliver against their objectives, or at least completely. So Antonio will take us through some of the background and fundamentals of strategy implementation and how individuals can develop their capability in order to exploit the many benefits that effective strategy implementation has to offer. Um, before I hand over to Antonio, bear with me a few more moments while I cover a few logistics for the session. So the first point to note is the session is being recorded and everyone that's registered will receive a follow-up email soon after the session, as soon as the recording is available online, so do look out for that. Um, secondly, you have an opportunity to submit questions at any stage throughout the session. I'll be keeping a close eye on those and when we get towards the end, we'll see how many of those we can, we can tackle. Um, and last but not least, feedback is very important to us in terms of helping us to plan and deliver webinars in the future. So we welcome any feedback and you'll have my email address from, from confirmation and reminder emails. Okay, that's the scene set. So without further ado, welcome Antonio. Great to have you with us today and it's over to you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Uh... Uh, APMG International for the opportunity. I just briefly show my face so that um, you uh, see who I am. And it's a pleasure to be here today with you to talk about some a topic I'm very passionate, and I believe it's it's a it's an important element of the future of organization personal development. So thank you for taking the time to to joining us and and listen about uh, what I think. Um, is going to be a very, very exciting future uh, for people working in the profession of projects, programs, agile teams, transformation, change. I think we're 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 in a in a in a great position to drive uh, the future. So I'm going to talk about <clears throat> the need to reinvent project management. How are we doing it? Uh, some ideas that uh, I'm developing, some other people are developing. <clears throat> I think that was already mentioned. So what is happening today and, and what's the opportunity, the challenges? Then I want to talk about project management reinvented. One important definition here I want to uh, make sure you understand. When I talk about projects, uh, it, it goes ab above the traditional uh, project management. For me, projects is any kind of change, meaning <laughs> Sometimes the change can be introduced through agile methods. Sometimes will be more continuous improvement. Sometimes the project management. Sometimes will be um, change management. So I talk about projects, which is all about change. And then last part, I, I will share a bit on on <clears throat> the journey that we started last year around the strategy implementation professional, and what I think is so crucial to move. Uh, for us. So just that in the scene, I think um, we've been um, for over a, a hundred years, a century, businesses have been uh, a focusing on efficiency. Um, this is what I call a world driven by efficiency. So if, if you look at a business, uh, there is two dimensions. One is the day-to-day -day activities, the running of the business or the organization, if it's non-profit or public sector. And then the other part is the change. So here what you see in blue and red is this two dimension. And, and what you see inside is the amount of resources, employees, budget, management attention <coughs> dedicated. So um, 20, 30, 40 years ago, the, there was not much resources and time dedicated to change. There was not much need to change. 
Um, so most of the employees were working in day-to-day -day activities, uh, management, attention, top management was on the day-to-day -day and so on. But as we've become more and more efficient with uh, a lot of improvement, like business process reengineering, outsourcing, SAPs and ERPs and so on, then there's a shift, a modest shift, a small shift every year where businesses are allocating more uh, uh, people, uh, more uh, budgets to projects. So this is until about five years ago. Then there has been a massive acceleration. Uh, so when you see starting to, when you see starting to see uh, artificial intelligence or robots, um, they are going to take massively the operations. Um, so there's a huge drop where uh, most of the people will move uh, to project-based team, agile teams, uh, because there's no need. We can do today operations with much less people faster than 10, 20 years ago. So I think this is where we are at the moment. This is a huge disruption inflection point in the way businesses, organizations are, are doing their work. So that means that the future is about projects. Um, the challenges that were in the middle is that these two worlds, the one driven by efficiency and the one driven by change, are almost opposites, uh, two different business models where most of the <coughs> organizational elements are different. Uh, let me just highlight a few. So uh, the culture in a world driven by efficiency is about uh, command control discipline. I'm sure you've been in organizations where it's like that. The focus is on efficiency, volumes, cost. At that time, you would have strategic planning as an important function. Um, you would plan for the future for three, five, seven years ahead. That was the average uh, duration of a strategy was around seven to nine years. This is maybe 20 years ago. On the other side, in a world driven by change, the culture is very different. It's entrepreneurship, it's collaboration. The focus is on innovation, on transformation, and strategy implementation becomes prime. Um, I think where I want to go, and we'll cover that in the third part of this presentation, is what type of skills do we need? What type of um, experience and knowledge do we want? For a well-driven efficiency, obviously there's no doubt, we want deep experts. We want people who are 20 years in marketing, 25 years in sales, in operations, in logistics. So this is really <clears throat> the type of skills that being a project manager those days, uh, you they will see, you, well, you're a generalist, you don't really count and you will not have a career. I, I've heard that so many times. Um, interesting, one of the key roles in a world driven by efficiency is the chief operating officer. It's 60, 80% of the uh, business is operations in the past. So CEOs were the number two in businesses. But as you've seen in my chart, CEOs will disappear. For me, that function is dead. Um, so what type of skills do we need? We need deep generalists. And I'm going to elaborate on that, but that's the future. Deep generalists, not just generalists, not just project managers or change managers, deep. And I will explain what I mean. And I think we'll see the rise of number two positions around chief transformation officer, chief project officer, <coughs> and so on. A last point I want to highlight, there's a lot on, on this slide, but just picking up a few. <coughs> I think the hierarchy was a, a good uh, frame uh, and structure for a world driven by efficiency. Um, it's how you become very efficient, by hierarchy and, and, and command and control. We know that model of organization is outdated, it's not agile, it's, is too slow to react. So we're moving into a mix, a hybrid of networks and project-based and agile teams. And uh, there will still be a bit of hierarchy, of course, but not the hierarchies that we've seen. And this raises, of course, I'm sure for you uh, experts in projects, uh, a question which came to me also when I was working on this for my HBR book is, um, yeah, but PMOs and portfolio management, it's a box in a hierarchy, right? These, these are just boxes where we put them hopefully high up in the hierarchy. So the whole concept of PMO and portfolio managers and 
uh, where I've been, been doing a lot of work, it, it will disappear too. It has to really evolve into more strategic roles and otherwise PMOs as we know them will be dead. So that's just what happens with this big, big shift towards what I, I refer also sometimes the world, uh, the project economy. So more and more and more and more projects. The challenge is that if you look anywhere about project implementation success, um, it's very poor or strategy implementation success. Um, around 60 to 70 percent of the projects fail, according to research from McKinsey, uh, PMI, uh, Brightline, um, HBR. So 60 to 70 percent of the projects fail, strategies fail really. Uh, I, I feel a bit ashamed uh, when I hear these figures because I, 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 I've been working in the industry of projects and I've been a bit of an influencer um, and I, I, I have problems to talk to some people and say, well, my success rate is, is 60 to 70 percent failure, just 30 percent projects succeed. So I think that's a big issue. Imagine, for example, you work in another industry and you say, seven out of 10 of your uh, well, operations in the hospital, the patient dies. Uh, or imagine you're working on, on the airlines industry and seven out of 10 flights collapses, crashes. Well, basically this is what's happening in projects and strategy implementation. The, the failure rate is huge. So I'm, I'm, I'm just as a voice in the world of projects, I say, we all need to step up. We need to change things in the way we do projects. We need to develop new competencies to be more, um, uh, to do projects better. And I'm, I'm working on that. Uh, but basically, if you do the math, uh, if we just double the success rate, so instead of three projects successful, six projects successful out of 10, we will just bring in uh, to to the world, uh, the GDP of China every year on value, on social impact. So just by doing those projects better, more successfully, for me that's a very very powerful uh, kind of vision and 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 purpose for our community. And linked to that is of course the Strategy Implementation Institute to to push us to get that target. Um, then we move into what I think has to be reinvented, right? It, it's obvious. We are in, in a profession where there's high failures of success. So something has to change. The world has changed. Uh, we will have more projects. We see that already. Uh, so we need to change. And I've been working uh, and researching around what needs to change. Uh, so I will highlight a couple of uh, some of the key elements that I think uh, need to change, and I'm, I'm 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 covering that here briefly. Um, I will have more when when the HBR book is is published, but I'll share the key concepts. I think one of the key challenges with project management frameworks and methodologies they are very complicated, and I'm going to explain. Um, so we need to simplify that. Um, I think the way we look at projects life cycle it's a bit narrow. It's a bit of a silo. We need to change that. And the third element I want to highlight is the way we measure projects. The main KPI, <coughs> which is the triple constraint or the iron triangle, it's a bit outdated, um, unfortunately. We love it, I love that concept, it's, it's, it's great, but it's outdated and I'm going to share why. So let me just deep dive on all of this. So if you look at the other uh, management uh, uh, theories and in other areas of management, you realize that the most commonly used um, methods and frameworks are super simple. Uh, let me just uh, prompt you on, if you imagine you need to discuss the strategy of your business, um, do you need to, uh, I, I guess, go through a PhD or um, read a lot to know a lot about strategy. No, there's just a very simple concept which is called the five forces from Michael Porter. And and thinking about these five elements in one slide, you can have a good discussion around strategy, right? Uh, everybody in that meeting could have a good discussion around strategy. 
um, and, and can come from very different backgrounds, different education, we still can discuss strategy. If you look at marketing, for example, the, if you want to think about a marketing a plan for your business or organization, it's the same. You look at uh, Cotter, the seven Ps, and the same. You can have everybody in that meeting, regardless whether they know more or less about marketing, they can have a good dialogue around marketing. If you say, let's reinvent our business, then you go to the business model canvas. This is nine nine building blocks that Alex Osterwald and Yves Pignon have developed and, and it's used by uh, I think five million people and yeah you don't need to be an entrepreneur or a guru in management to discuss business models it's very simple um, and the same for the Agile Manifesto I think Agile was very successful because it was extremely simple so no doubt that the things that are being used uh to do businesses and 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 address some of the challenges are are simple tools but let's look at project management i took here the pm box is the one i'm more familiar uh, but uh, from what i've seen most of the project management methodologies tend to be a bit similar um, so just a quick question that you can put on the chat a small mini test here uh, it's not ranked, of course, but when was the first uh, uh, edition of the project management body of knowledge published? 1994, 1996, 1999, 1969. Uh, when was that uh, published? And then the second, just put it in the chat and see if you got that right. Take a, a few seconds. A, B, C, D. <clears throat> And the second question I, I want to bring your attention is how big, how long, how many pages has this PM block? And, and when we go to the next slide, you, you will realize that the PM block, which is a great, great guide and, and a, a, probably one of the best uh, project management book, is just has gone exponentially in the amount of pages. So from the first edition published 1996, in 176, 176 pages, we are in the latest sixth edition with 756 pages plus the Agile Guide. So um, do you think anybody will read that which is not a project management professional? No. What do we have today in project management that can act like uh, the five forces? Nothing. We don't have anything. So we do have the Prince2 project management methodologies for the 5% of people working in projects, 5%. But for the temporary project managers, the occasional project people working in projects, we saw, we, which as we've seen, they're growing exponentially. There's nothing, there's nothing. We cannot. They will never in their lives read or open or buy the PM book or related project because it's super complicated. So I think one of the biggest goals for me is was to simplify, to simplify. So I, I'm, I'm lucky to know Alex Osterwald and Yves Pignon, we're friends. Uh, and I, I told them, I want to do a canvas for projects. So what you see is, is this oversimplification of the 756 pages. Uh, into a, a very high level view of what is a project. My goal with this was that anybody in a meeting can discuss the key elements of a project. You don't need to be a project manager, expert or program or agile. Anybody, any stakeholder could go through this list together and see, well, we don't have an executive sponsor. Well, then you have a big issue in your project or the scope is not very clear. Well, you have a big issue. Uh, the business case, well, it's not clear. We don't have that. Then you have another big issue. So might be worth considering the project. So the goal of this project canvas, which is free to download on my website, is to simplify. Uh, today, I have 14 building blocks. As you can see, there's four dimensions. The why, why are we doing the projects? Um, uh, you can recognize the business case. One thing I added is that I think the purpose of the projects is is sometimes even more important than the business case and i don't know why methodologies never talked about the purpose the purpose is what drives 
uh, the engagement of the people, what motivates them. It's not the business case, it's the purpose. So I, I make a, a special note on purpose uh, as part of that why definition. Then the who is about the governance and the role of the sponsor. If you don't have a sponsor in you, digital transformation, if that person is not active, your project will fail 100% sure. You can have the best project manager, but the executive sponsor is not actively involved in a major transformation project, it will never work. Then you see the other elements of basic traditional project management. I just added at the end, change management instead of communication. I don't think uh, with communication, with a communication plan, you can today change the mind uh, <clears throat> and let people adopt new ways of working. It's more around change management. And then, of course, the organization you're working. So this is uh, uh, available for free. You can have it uh, and use it. There's quite a lot of people using it. The new version will come in October and it will have just nine building blocks. Um, some of the biggest uh, uh, failures and mistakes which lead to this, I think, uh, bad results in performance in project is that we've always believed that there was a need for one single methodology for managing any kind of projects. And I'm part of that. I believe that. I've implemented many, many project management methodologies. And I thought, well, any project will go through the same life cycle. Any project will use the same templates and tools. And that's a big, big mistake. I, I didn't realize. I realized that now you cannot just have one method. Uh, it's like when you are at home and they tell you, well, here's a hammer. With the hammer, you can fix everything you want. But just with the hammer. That's impossible. You will never fix all the issues at home with just one hammer. And then the other mix, big, big mistake that we've made in this community of project management is that as soon as Agile came, many people swift, switched to Agile and said, well, no, it's not project management. Forget your hammer. It's too heavy. Let's use Agile, which is a screw driver, and it's much lighter, right? And then you say, well, forget the hammer, but still use just one tool. Yeah, and, and that's so wrong. It's the same. It's, it's not one or the other. So one of the things where we need to evolve is, uh, is moving into a toolbox. We need to be experts. We need to have our own toolbox as implementation specialists. It's a toolbox of different tools. And in its project management is Agile, is Scrum, is Lean, is program management. It's continuous improvement, Six Sigma. So I, I think that this is one of the biggest changes that we need to introduce. Stop fighting against Agile or traditional. Embrace them both <coughs> and add more, add more. And you can still have a strong area on project management if you like that and that's where you work or Agile if you're in technology. But that's for me a big, big mistake that we need to fix. Another big, big area that I think is going to change is, <coughs> um, uh, let me give you an example. <coughs> this is a hospital in Brussels and the date for, um, for construction, to start the construction was 2016. Completion of the state of the art hospital was 2020. So four years, which is quite okay, it's, it's not bad. Uh, for a state-of-the-art hospital starting from scratch. To my surprise was that in 2018, so two years before completion, they oper started to open. They opened and part of it was already operational, having uh, uh, treated patients, having babies being delivered, while the other part of the construction was still uh, on progress. So it's just a different type of approach for planning. Right, you need to plan conscious about noise and, and safety, and which it's probably different than what you would do in the past. But I think we we will move in when we talk about strategy implementation and project management towards these concepts. Where can we get more benefits faster? Um, so this is when I talk about the second point. I think our traditional project life cycle it's a bit outdated um, today in most of the methodologies uh, in what we learn they would say well ideation you don't care as a project manager programmer you don't care what happens there that's a black box 
just wait that something comes out and then you'll make a business case, a plan, implement. And then you close it and what happens after, you don't care. It's not your problem, uh, you just deliver. Uh, and the benefits, you might talk a little bit because it's uh, fancy, and uh, but do you really address them? Do you really take ownership of the benefits? I've not seen that very often. So that's our today's and the last 30, 40 years project life cycle. This is what we've learned. I think it's very outdated. I think the future starting from now is that we need to experiment and see what happens in ideation. We need to see which ideas are ready to be a project or which ideas are not ready to be a project and they need more ideation. They need maybe some prototyping or some agile methods. We need to choose which methods we want to use from our toolbox to uh, manage the project. Is it agile? Is it tradition? It's a mix, it's a hybrid. Um, I think what we do today in project management, the 95% is going to shrink to 20, 30%. Hopefully, with the help of artificial intelligence, big data, that will just represent one day a week of our work. Uh, we will care about what happens with the outcome. Uh, so we'll run sometimes what we build. And the big shift is around benefits. There's no doubt that if we want to be successful in this world driven by change, we need to focus on benefits. I think people, stakeholders in our projects do not care too much about deliverables. The only thing they care is about benefits and impact that your project will have. So why don't we build just benefits plans with milestones on benefits? Forget about the deliverables. That's your internal kitchen. Um, so it's a bit kind of uh, provocative what I'm saying, but I love to see just projects with plans on benefits, strategy with only benefits, milestones and activities and not any more deliverables. So that's what I, I think is going to change. The last part, <clears throat> it's about changing how we measure. And this is a bit provocative too. I think the triple constraint, the, the golden iron uh, triangle, uh, we've loved that. I think it's probably the first uh, concept that I learned when I started to work in projects 25 years ago is the triple constraint is the most important concept in project management. And you know that. So the scope, the cost and the time and the quality. And then what you see is, uh, let me give you just a couple examples. So if you look at a project like this from the triple constraint angle, uh, how would you consider it? If the project was originally scheduled for four years and a budget of 7 million. What happened? It took a little bit more, not four years, 14 years. And it costed a little bit more, not 7 million, 102. If you looked at from our project management perspective and the traditional way of measuring, this is a disaster of a project, right? This is a project that should have never been finished. This project should have been stopped um, after four or five years, seeing that we were just going on and on and on and on. So a red, red project never should have happened. Let me show you which project I'm talking. The Sydney Opera House. So yes, according to our triple constraint or KPIs, this project is a failure. This is what we need to say, yeah, it's. According to our methods and KPIs, this project is a failure. They say, what? Come on. This project made in one year all the 100 millions that they went over budget. And that's created billions. And, and, and just on, on visitors, imagine just the, 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 the brand value of uh, symbolic. Yeah, so this is something that I still don't understand. How can we not have metrics which say, well, we're late on, pro uh, on budget, we're late on time, but this project, it, it's just going to blow it. It's just going to be great. So let's continue. The impact, the benefits is great. So I think that's where we need to move uh, to become more credible in, in the area of strategy, implementations and value creation is talking more about the values and maybe less about the inputs 
So I'm working on this. This is work in progress. I just want to share it uh, as you're taking the time to listen in to me. But uh, and maybe you have other views, other ideas. I think these concepts are are better to be co-created than just one person. But I'm developing the concept of a relevance triple constraint, which is uh, about the benefits the project will deliver. So what's the value? What are the risks that we're taking? And how sustainable it is? So this is something that I'm going to explain more detail uh, in the future because I'm just developing. But I think we need to have something out of the benefits. We will be much more credible. <clears throat> Let me give you another example. How would you consider a project that is more than 100 years late? 100 years. I, I, there's no typo there. There's no 100 days or 100 months. It's 100 years. According to our constraints, it will be a total disaster. Right? Well, let me tell you one of my favorite projects. It's called the Sagrada Familia. Sagrada Familia. It's 100 years late in Barcelona. Uh, it's a wonderful project. It's, 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 uh, it's, uh, it's an iconic project. And I went to talk to them. I said, listen, are you a bit ashamed that we are uh, so late in your project? And say, no, Antonio, we're not in a shame. No, we don't care that we're so late. You know who's our sponsor? I said, no, who's your sponsor? And they told me, God is our sponsor. God is not in a hurry. You are. So back to what the stakeholders are looking. Sometimes will be time, sometimes will be cost, but often will be other other things that they're looking. In this case, it's not cost or time. What they're looking is something that is memorable forever. And the other big challenge, you will imagine a project going so late that people are demotivated and, and they yet drop out and they don't participate in the project meetings. No, they're one of the most engaged team I've ever seen. They're so passionate. They love what they're doing. So there's so much engagement because the purpose of that project is to make something memorable forever. They're working on something that was developed 100 years ago. It's proud, it's pride. So one thing that we don't have today in the triple constraint is how engaged are the people? <clears throat> It's one of the most important success drivers. If your people are engaged and believe strongly on the project, that project will high perform, outperform any other project. So I think we need to have something around people. And for me, um, the key elements of this triple constraint is the alignment with your purpose. If people have a strong purpose and there is alignment with the purpose of the project, this is great yeah if you want to do a better world and you're working on sustainability projects great that person we're going to work 200 percent in your projects dedication you can have very committed people but if they don't show up or they can just work 10 percent of the time in your project it's it's not working and then you have yeah the recognition people need to be recognized if you cut on recognition the engagement is going to go down if there's no alignment with the purpose, the engagement is going to go down. So this is just a bit of a preview I wanted to share with you <coughs> about what I think we need to do is, of course, keep the triple constraint. I'm not saying this is bad. I think it's just not addressing the needs of a project manager or a sponsor or a stakeholders. Um, we need to develop something on the benefits, the value, something on the engagement. And with that, I think with all these 10 changes, I think we can do much better. So if we can simplify so <coughs> uh, about the concepts we use so that everybody can understand projects better. They can be engaged on the project much easier. If we look at the end to end project life cycle differently, if we look at how we measure projects, I think there is already a few steps to get projects um, deliver more successfully. And what does it mean for us personally? Why, what's the strategy implementation professional? What's the, why do I say that this is for me the next big step for people working in project, in change, in agile? Uh, <laughs> so <clears throat> I want to come back to that point of, uh, in a world driven by efficiency, obviously we were generally, so we didn't have 
really uh, an opportunity to climb the career ladder very fast or, or at all. In a world driven by change, we need this end-to-end -end expertise. We need project managers who can work uh, with agile teams across the organization, who understand strategy and who can deliver. So I think the future is about deep generalists. I have a couple of statistics here <clears throat> that are not just coming from me, but this one, uh, uh, LinkedIn News Europe poll that they did um, a few uh, weeks, month ago, and they were asking uh, all these LinkedIn experts who is more likely to get further in their careers. And you can see 69% of 10,000 people said generalists. So it's just a poll, but uh, I'm sure if you would have done this survey uh, 20 years ago, maybe 15, you would have 80% specialist. Now it has flipped. Uh, so kind of validating what I'm saying. If you look to uh, uh, maybe something a bit more thorough, uh, the World Economic Forum, they create, they, they issue this, the future of jobs report, I think every two years maybe. Uh, and you can see they have a lot of great information, but there's one section where say, these are the top 20 projects of the future, uh, 20, 20, 20, top 20 jobs, sorry. And these are the top 20 jobs that will disappear or heavily affected. And what you see on the list of the top 11 is that you can see already quite a few on, on transformation, on strategy, on project management. So again, reflecting that we are in the right place today to deliver this. We are the highly demanded uh, resources in startups, in, 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 uh, in organization, mid-size, large, especially large organization. I think public sector is also looking for this. Um, so let me just tell you a story from a good friend of mine, which uh, just explains a bit what I mean by end-to-end -end, uh, implementation specialist. Uh, Cesar is a friend uh, of mine. Uh, we were playing uh, football when we were kids, 13, 14 years old. Um, he's a fan of Atletico Madrid. I'm from Real Madrid, so we were always teasing each other. And um, and at one point, in, we lost track of each other. I don't know where he studied. I, I, we just lost track. And we met maybe five years ago in Singapore, and he was uh vp of asia pacific for microsoft one of the top five uh persons in microsoft work with bill gates work with uh, steve balmer and i said yes, sir what why how come you are now at that level what did you do in your career and he told me listen i started selling microsoft software packages uh, and I was quite successful in Madrid and then I moved and at one point Microsoft said I want to go into uh, ERP market. Microsoft didn't have an ERP. They bought a Scandinavian company called Navision and they asked Cesar if he wanted to lead that project, integration project and creation of a new business unit. And Cesar said yes, yes, of course, I, I, I've done sales Now I want to learn something else. I, I think projects is something interesting. So became, he became the project manager for the integration of Microsoft with Navision, um, fully dedicated. He spent three years creating that new business unit for Microsoft. And the project was very successful, he told me. And I said, Cesar, great. This is what I'm doing, always projects. And he's, I asked him, Cesar, what did you do next? Which project? I asked him, no, not what did you do next. I asked him what we usually ask in project management. Which project did you do after? Right, that's what we always ask. When your project is very successful, then you are expecting to do something more strategic, another project. And he told me, no, Antonio, I didn't ask for another project. I say, what, are you crazy? This is what we all do, 100% project managers. We always do that. We finish a project, we move to the next one. And he said, no, I asked my bosses that I wanted to run the new organization, the new division. Um, there's no one in Microsoft who knows more about ERP uh, than me. I've been working three years full time, so I want to run it. And I said, wow, you just opened my eyes. Yes, sir, there's something wrong in our profession. Uh, we should sometimes say we want to run what we've built. 
I understand if you're doing public sector projects, yes, you need to hand it over. Uh, if you're doing consulting projects, you hand it over. And when we're talking about internal projects in your organization, there's nobody often more knowledgeable about the project products or project services or business you need than the project manager. So that's where I say, uh, run it sometimes. So that's an end-to-end -end project management specialist. Is somebody had who works <coughs> who works from the beginning of the project life cycle from the idea. Uh, it's a bit entrepreneur, then develops the project, implements the project, and then run it and delivers the benefit. So for me, what we need to develop, and we have a very good basis, is expanding our toolbox. So if you've been learning projects, look into Agile uh, and design thinking, and why not Six Sigma? So this is making you really uh, rich in terms of tools. Um, but also expand your scope from uh, innovation, entrepreneurship to value creation, uh, product development, business models, technology. And that's for me what I call an implementation specialist. That's what I want to build with this uh, new certification that we put together with, <coughs> with APMG International. So if you look at the uh, uh, a spectrum of um, our careers and certification. Actually, there's nothing at the top. There's very little. On strategy, there's really no certification. There is the balance score card. Then you can go to an MBA if you want, but that's maybe 40, 50, 60,000 investment. But there's nothing. There's a lot on, por on projects, on programs, a bit on portfolio. There's a lot on, on the bottom side, but on strategy, there's no certification. So if you want to develop something around becoming more strategic to looking at end-to-end -end picture, then um, that, <coughs> that was our aim with uh, this. And, and that was the aim of creating the Strategy Implementation Institute and creating the certification and the course uh, with APMG. So I do believe that it's a, a, a very niche uh, market, there's no no much competition. Uh, some people that go through this course, they say, well, it's like a mini MBA. Yes, it is. We want to open up. Uh, my my reason and my partner, Robin Speculan, was to really fill in that gap, uh, not really from, of course, there's a market opportunity, but we, we are both believers that we can do much better in implementation and in projects. Uh, so there's a strong passion to do and deliver more value for organizations and, and the world. <clears throat> Just a few minutes before I move to the question is um, a, a big tough highlight. <clears throat> the whole course is built on seven modules and, and it's all about leadership excellence, financial value, uh, not just financial value in general, uh, business models, stakeholder management, culture evolution, employee engagement, track performance. Um, so you'll have a lot of information you see uh, already the topics, it's it's something a much higher level than what we usually see in project program, uh, benefit management, portfolio management. It's another higher level that we wanted to put in together. So this is the seven. The course is about 35 hours um, of online training whenever you want to do it within three years, uh, uh, three months, sorry, three months. Um, and the other thing on the course to become strategy implementation professional is that we just didn't put Robin and my experience and, and research into the course. We have curated a lot of good ideas, good tools from other thought leaders that you can, uh, that, yeah, they're, they're good too. So we didn't want to be the only source and that's not realistic. So we have a good basis, but we always recommend good and we keep updating so if there's new things coming in so the the package is uh, we have a course and a certification a bundle you can check that we offer also through our partners if you join Antonio? Antonio? 
Antonio, we've lost your audio, I'm afraid. Uh, most of them. Ah. That's Sorry. okay, you came back there. I think it, it may be your webcam. Yeah, it, yeah maybe. I took it the webcam. Yeah, I somehow I pressed it. Um, so what, what uh, you see, the, it's, it's open for anybody who wants to learn around strategy to elevate a bit their, their vision and their, their talk and their, their learning. Um, we are launching, as we speak, the first ATO Global Partnership with Learning Tree International. So very, very excited uh, uh, talking to them. They really see the value of, of, uh, of this uh, uh, new product. I don't like the word product, but this new learning opportunity and, and credentials. Um, so they have, we're building like a, a package to the live workshops with them and we'll have another more in-depth webinar about strategy implementation certification webinar on the 28th uh two two sessions on that date also uh quite broad so uh we're pleased to announce that the learning tree partnership is is now going to be offering this um, strategy implementation uh professional we are also thanks to mark and the team in apmg gavin we're launching uh opening this up for other atos um, that will be just towards the end of April. So with that, and I just want to thank you for, for your time, for your attention. I hope you found the, the points interesting, thought provoking. I do. Strong. Strongly believe that these are skills that, uh, are very beneficial in, in our careers, in our profession. Great, thanks Antonio. Are you, are you open to a few questions now? Gavin? I'm open for a few questions and happy to answer anything afterwards if there's no time. So yes, please. Okay, let's uh, let's get a couple of questions. So this is a question we see quite regularly, actually. Um, so if you've got any advice for um, influence, how do you effectively influence senior leaders or senior stakeholders to change their mindset when you're trying to, you know, adjust things like this? Well, it's a great question. I hear that also quite often. Definitely, yes. I think what we've been, it's a quick, uh, it's a very big uh, mindset shift that we need to have in our profession. As uh, in the past, we were just people delivering. I think we need to move into more executive positions where we are allowed to demand and challenge senior leaders. Something that I do regularly, if I'm asked to lead the project, I say, okay, I can lead it, but you you're the senior leader, you're the CEO, I need your time. And I need to see you every two weeks for half an hour. And I need you to chair the steering committee, which should happen every month. So uh, I'm quite demanding on the senior leadership too. I know that if I don't have them, my project would just go down the drain. So I think we need to step up. I recently did an APM um, uh, podcast around this in the APM. Uh, you can find that talking about that mindset shift that we need to bring of uh, becoming a specialist, uh, implementation specialist. Good question. Thank you. Hmm. Thanks, Antonio. Uh, second question. Um, it's more, more of a comment, really. So I just want to see if you agree. Um, so it says a very good point about benefits. This will also require the contracts and KPIs to be centered around benefits rather than deliverables. So I assume you would agree with that. Well, absolutely. Yeah, you answer yourself in the right manner. I think the contrast should move towards expressing the benefits uh, as the prime. Uh, and I know it's not easy. I think I'm talking in a simplistic manner to be provocative, to stretch, uh, to get better. But there's always like a gray zone where you need to find the balance between what you can measure, what you cannot measure, what you can measure in the next six, nine months and later on. So we need to be a bit more creative in that side but definitely good answer and to your own question thanks Antonio um, a question about your book uh, so when, when would that be available to purchase the from the uh, your Harvard Business Review book yeah it will be available in as of October it's already in Amazon uh, I'm very pleased that this HBR who's publishing it they're all they had the HBR 
project management handbook, which was 10 years old, and, and it was not really, really good. It was a compilation of articles. So they came to me and said, listen, we want to reinvent with you project management, make it more accessible for uh, people who work, uh, um, people that read us, and also as executive sponsors, which are big audience. And, and that's what really uh, motivated to me is that we can start educating senior leaders too. Uh, through HBR, and I hope I just opened the door for more people to join me later on with more and more work on this. And and they were surprised. My editor said, let me see how many articles we publish on projects and change and so on, and they don't have many. So they're realizing that, yes, we're moving into project-based world, project economy, and they uh, this is a very, very important area they're focusing. So thank you for the question. October will be uh, released. Great, thanks, Antonio. Um, there's a couple of questions around the course as well. So a couple of folks interested um, in sort of the blended learning option, but also the course fee. So what I, what I'll do is I'll make sure um, in the follow-up email for the webinar we'll include um, a link to the course. But um, just off the top of your head, Antonio, the cost of the course. There is a bundle option. You just need to check on on our website. I think it was 700 USD. It includes the access to the training for three three months uh 35 40 hours so it's very interactive uh, course it gets the strategy implementation body of knowledge you get the exam with apmg for the certification and you become member of the institute we have week monthly calls with uh, leaders in strategy we're building a community so that's what the package for the 700 usd that you can find now um in our website thank right. you thanks thanks that's all right. and um it's a question around how strategy how strategy implementation fits in the public sector i assume it's uh you know just as relevant and just as valuable as it would be in the private sector lost your audio again uh Antonio. Antonio, good. I can't hear you at the moment. I think it's super valuable. I, 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 I'm sorry for that. Ah. Mark, can hey, you hear me? Yeah, you're back. Yeah, yeah, it's just a bit of a delay. Sorry, sorry, I don't know what happened here. It's probably on my end. Yes, public sector, absolutely. We, we've been talking to Saudi Arabia, for example. They have this 2030 a vision for the country. Um, there are, of course, UK is very strong on public sector and they're investing. There's some people already from the public sector, HS2, uh, uh, who are going through the course. So I definitely think public sector is, it's uh, it's 30 to 40% of our, our interest because they do quite a lot of big, big projects. Great, thanks, Antonio. Um, there's a question asking about when we, how we can get the project management canvas mentioned mm -hmm. earlier. Just Google on my website. So my website is Antonio Nieto Rodriguez, my my name dot com, and there you can find it and download. You can download a copy of an articles, and there's a lot of stuff there for free. Fantastic. And I can see that uh, we have a colleague from Learning Tree on the on the on the session today, and uh, the details of the blended path will be live on their website today. So I'll I'll um, try and get that link uh, before we send, and we'll include that Great. in the follow up email. Um, Very Matt, good. Yes, highly yeah, recommend it. Yeah, we we're getting close to the hour, Antonio, aren't we? So uh, we best uh, start wrapping up there. Um, we've lost your screen now. I can't see the slides at the moment. Can you bring up the um, the further info slide could just be useful for folks as we close yeah one second do you see it uh yeah not in oh yeah that's better um yeah we've got we've got a slide with a few links haven't we i think it's two back Uh, 
and we, we'll be including the links anyway in the in the follow up email. So um, yeah, do look do, do look out for that um, within within a couple of hours or so. Um, so that just leaves us to thank you very much for attending, for joining us today. I hope it's been a, a really informative and useful session for you. Um, I've seen a lot of good comments uh, coming through the questions, Antonio. So it certainly sounds like you've uh, struck the right chord, <laughs> which is always good. Well, if we can share the comments later, I'm happy to go through them and maybe answer any more questions. Otherwise, just reach out. I'm happy to connect and and hear your suggestions or comments or disagreements. And I hope you look into this uh, new um, program strategy implementation professional. I, I, I do believe it, it's, it's, a, it's a good one, not just because I built it, but I, I do think it's a, an important step for us. Yeah, thanks, Antonio. And uh, just a reminder as well, because I see a couple of couple of questions along these lines. We are we have recorded the session, um, and as I say, the follow up email uh, should be with you within the next couple of hours or so. Um, so that's it. Thanks again, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your week and the upcoming Easter break, and we hope to see you again soon. And thanks, uh, Antonio, for your insights and expertise today. So thanks again, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you.